Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. If you'd like to follow along, go to the AIbreakdown.beehive.com. You can also find that link at breakdown.network. Today, we kick off with a story that is another report with some big prognostications. This one comes from investment bank Goldman Sachs, and they say that by 2025, AI investment could represent up to 4% of U.S. GDP. This comes from the article, AI Investment Forecast to Approach $200 Billion Globally by 2025, that was published a couple days ago this week. Now, even in a world of bombastic AI reports, this one is bombastic. The article begins... Innovations in electricity and personal computers unleashed investment booms of as much as 2% of U.S. GDP as the technologies were adopted into the broader economy. Now, investment in artificial intelligence is ramping up quickly and could eventually have an even bigger impact on GDP, according to Goldman Sachs Economics Research. So first, let's look at what they're estimating those investment numbers in AI are in the U.S., in China, and across the world. In 2021, the world saw $93.54 billion of investment in AI. That actually came down slightly in 2022 to 91.9. But in 2023, Goldman estimates that the world global investment in AI will equal $110.19 billion. Of that, they estimate the U.S. will represent $56.83 billion and China will represent $24.74 billion. By 2024, Goldman sees the world number going up to $132 billion, with the U.S. at around $68 billion, and China at around $30 billion, and the lines just go up from there. Part of what Goldman's argument rests upon is the fact that people are understanding, widely speaking, just how much labor productivity could be increased by generative AI across a huge number of different industries and sectors. However, as Goldman puts it, for large-scale transformation to happen, businesses will need to make significant upfront investment in physical, digital, and human capital to acquire and implement new technologies and reshape business processes. So effectively what they're saying is that there will be this period of transition where a huge amount of upfront money will have to be spent in order to retrofit the business world for the AI era. That means investing in actual infrastructure, which might mean things like compute infrastructure, but it also means reskilling employees, which of course comes with a price tag as well. When you view this $200 billion number, not as some generically inflating investment amount, but representative of a key transitional period, I think it starts to look a lot more realistic. To give evidence of that, they point to previous tech-driven productivity booms, which they say have been driven by large investment cycles. In the case of both electricity and personal computing, Goldman shows how increases in investment in the underlying infrastructure. In the case of personal computing, that means information processing equipment and software investment. And in the case of electricity, that means manufacturing equipment and plant investment, led then with a lag of a few years or a half decade to productivity growth that, broadly speaking, mirrored that level of investment. Goldman writes, AI-related investment is climbing from a relatively low starting point and will likely take a few years to have a major impact on the economy. Over the longer term, AI-related investment could peak as high as 2.5 to 4% of GDP in the U.S. and 1.5 to 2.5% of GDP of other major AI leaders. They also point out that there has been a seminal shift just recently. Goldman writes, Even though it will take time for AI to boost productivity, market interest in AI has already increased rapidly, with more than 16% of companies in the Russell 3000 mentioning the technology on earnings calls, up from less than just 1% of those firms in 2016. Roughly half of that spike came after the release of ChatGPT in the fourth quarter of 2022. For those of you who are listening rather than watching, Goldman's chart of the percentage of companies that are mentioning AI in their earnings calls looks like the type of up-and-to-the-right graph that gets VCs excited to get up in the morning. Now, what about who benefits from this $200 billion of new spend? Goldman says that they expect it to be concentrated in four key business segments. The first is companies that train and develop AI models. The second is those that supply the infrastructures, i.e. data centers. The third is companies that develop software to run AI-enabled applications. And the fourth is enterprise end users that pay for those software and cloud infrastructure services. Now, when it comes to CEO expectations around how AI will impact labor, over the next year, a little over 20% of Fortune 500 CEOs surveyed said that they thought AI would decrease labor needs, while over 40% said that they thought that labor needs would be unchanged. However, zooming five years out, over 70% of Fortune 500 CEOs said that they anticipated that lower labor would be needed, while under 20% said that labor would be unchanged. The TLDR on this report is just another example of a major financial institution that thinks we are just at the very beginning of a major transformative AI cycle. Speaking of AI-related investment, 
Next up on today's AI Breakdown Brief, we are looking at yet another firm that is trying to, if not dethrone NVIDIA in the AI chip space, at least provide some competition. Reuters reports that AI chip firm Tenstorrent has raised $100 million in fresh capital from investors including Hyundai and Samsung. Previous to this funding, Tenstorrent had raised $234.5 billion and was already in the Unicorn Club. And that interest has been driven in part by the fact that it's led by chip industry veteran Jim Keller, who previously developed chips for companies including Tesla, Intel, and Apple. Over in the world of LLMs, Alibaba Cloud has released two open source models to compete with Meta's Llama 2. Now, interestingly, a couple weeks ago, Alibaba also announced that it would be supporting Meta's Llama 2. And so it appears from this news that Alibaba is not putting all of its chips in any one basket, even its own. It is worth noting, however, that we kind of have to put open source in brackets as it's similar to Llama 2's version of open source, which one might consider as mostly open source, however, with a few different restrictions. In the same way that Meta sets some limits around needing special approvals and permissions should monthly active users exceed a certain number, Alibaba's Quen 7B models come with a similar restriction. Finally today, if there was any doubt where Google Search is moving, the company has just released a number of updates for their experimental search generative experience. On Wednesday, August 2nd, they released a blog post called Three New Things You Can Do with Generative AI in Search. Now remember, the whole point of SGE is that in addition to Google's classic set of little blue links from all around the web, there is a top section that is generated by AI that brings together information that perhaps lives within those links, but is custom curated by Google's artificial intelligence. The biggest update this week is a move into the world of multimodality. As Google writes, sometimes it's more powerful to understand something by seeing it. So we recently brought images to even more AI-powered overviews. For example, when you search for something like tiniest birds of prey, you'll quickly be able to reference what the bird looks like and get relevant information from the web. And over the next week, you'll begin to see videos within some overviews where it's helpful to see something in motion, such as a demonstration of a yoga pose or how to get stains out of marble. Now, outside of that major substantive update, Google has also increased the speed with which results populate, saying that they've reduced the time it takes to generate AI overviews by half. And they're also adding small features like making sure that you understand when different links that are being recommended were published to help you decide which little pathways you want to follow down. There's an interesting bifurcation happening right now where the announcements from companies like OpenAI and Meta around generative AI tend to be big and technical and have implications for the way that the field develops. Google, on the other hand, is extremely focused, it seems, on the productizing of AI for regular people. In other words, videos showing up in the SGE experience may not be as big of an announcement as something like Code Interpreter, but it might be relevant for a whole lot more people. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.